Okay, friends, here we are, week 11, and our spiritual practice for this week is intercessory prayer. As we wrap up the series of Ephesians, as we are spending time in Ephesians 6. So, here's the definition of intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer invites us into God's care and concern for us, our families, our friends, and ultimately the world around us. If we keep company with Jesus and as we keep company with Jesus in intercession, we begin to see the world from God's perspective and from God's heart. Really, that's what intercessory prayer is, lining ourselves up with God's heart and his will to bring about his will. Often we say to people, when they share something with us or we hear of a need, we say, I'll be praying for you. And I confess, I'm probably at the top of the line, like I don't always follow through with that. But what might be God inviting us to, ways that we can intercede for people and we haven't done so? And I, like I was struck by that. And listen to this quote, prayer is not a substitute for action. It is an action for which there is no substitute. I'll say it again. Prayer is not a substitute for action. It is an action for which there is no substitute. So we do need to pray and act, but often we don't even start with the first step of prayer. There is no substitute for prayer. Intercessory prayer is willing God's will. Right, we hear in the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we are engaging in intercessory prayer, we are willing God's will to happen. So there's a battle inside that first needs to be fought before we fight the battle outside. Intercession then is engaging in a deeply spiritual battle. It's not always easy. But the point is to remain faithful and trust God with the outcome. We pray, we persist, and we commit to the Lord. Prayers of committed people become a part of the cosmic reality that God works with. God uses intercessory prayers to tip the balance, really, and to change the shape of the distorted realities in this world. You see, because when we come and we pray in accordance with his word and his will, it has a cosmic impact and can impact the things in this world that grieve us so much, the things that are not right. So I'm going to give you a list of several people in the Bible who were intercessors, who engaged in intercessory prayer, beginning with Abraham. If you're familiar with Abram, you know that he had um, a relative whose name was Lot, who uh, was living in a city that was full of sin and Abraham interceded on behalf of Lot's family and God spared them out of that city. Hannah, Hannah interceded and God answered her prayer with the child of Samuel. And Samuel grew up then to be uh, a prophet, one who prayed, was a priest over the nation of Israel. And he says this, God forbid that I sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Samuel felt a great burden to pray for God's people, to pray for God's purposes and God's will and God's plan. Moses, he was an intercessor. On the journey from Egypt to the promised land, numerous times where God was frustrated with his people and Moses stepped in and he interceded. And at one point God said, I'm not going with you. And Moses pled the case of the people, right? Lord, don't forsake your people. Don't forsake your glory. Protect your name, God. What if these people around see that you've abandoned us? What about your name, O oh Lord? See, that's what intercessory prayer does. It, it prays on behalf that God's glory would be known. And that's, what, that's how Moses prayed. Elijah, in 1 Kings 18, again, to God's glory, he was battling other prophets to see who, who was serving the real God. He doused the altar with water and prayed 
that God would burn it all up, and indeed God answered and burned it all up to show himself famous that it was about God and his will, that this is God's world. He is the true God. Daniel. I referenced Daniel several weeks ago when we talked about prayer, and I'm going to circle back round to him. But Nehemiah, the, um, one of the, the king satraps uh, from uh, Nebuchadnezzar's court in Babylon, he went back to assess what was going on in the nation of Israel, and he wept as he looked at Jerusalem, at the city, and he began to pray and intercede on behalf of his people um, and that, that the city would be rebuilt, that the temple would be rebuilt. We see the church intercessing, uh, being uh, interceding for, uh, before Pentecost, and we see Jesus on numerous times interceding for the people, the feeding of 5,000. He prays that the Lord of the harvest would send workers. He prays at the raising of Lazarus, and the most um, poignant or powerful prayer that he prays is before he goes to the cross. John 17. I think we've mentioned that before in this series. But he says, to sanctify the believers by God's word. Sanctify them. Your word is truth, he says. And then he says, I'm not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you would protect them from the evil one. And even on the cross, Jesus was yet interceding in the very giving of his life, but he speaks out of his mouth. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we see many examples and people in the Bible interceding on behalf of God's people and for the world. And so that's a kind of prayer that we are invited into. So let's take a look at Daniel quickly. One of the things I'm most struck by is Daniel's uh, tenacity and intentionality. He prays in a place that he's not supposed to be praying. See, he was risking his life to pray, and he prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. It says in Daniel's 9 and 10 that he set his face to seek the Lord, that he was intentional about this kind of prayer, and he intercedes on behalf of the people. He intercedes uh, in accordance to God's revealed will, God's word. That's one of the things that we, we studied before, praying scripture. We can use that in prayers of intercession. We pray in accordance with God's word. We confess. We confess our own sin that our prayers might be heard. But we also can confess, as Daniel did here and Nehemiah did and Moses did, confessing the sins of the people around them and crying out in mercy. So we can be intentional about setting our face to seek the Lord. We pray in accordance with God's will. We confess. We cry for mercy. And we can pray in confidence. We can pray in confidence that God is hearing, and we can expect an answer. Isaiah 65, 24 reminds us, God says, even while they are yet speaking, I will hear, I will answer. And that's what happened with Daniel. In the midst of his praying, God sends an angel already. Daniel was praying not only for the sins of the people and for the revival of the people, but he was praying to understand, to understand, to read the prophecies. And in the middle of his prayer, the angel shows up and he reminds him and says twice, for Daniel, you are greatly beloved. Now let me tell you what this means. You see, the basis of Daniel's praying, his prayers of intercession, were based on his relationship with God. We know that he was in relationship with God because the angel who is in the presence of God and who was sent to Daniel says, you are greatly beloved. And so we have access, friends, to the Holy of Holies to intercede on behalf of ourself, our families, our friends, the world, the things that are not right in the world. We are invited to do this kind of praying, for we are greatly beloved. So friends, intercessory prayer is grounded in the mercy and in the grace of God. We cry out and intercede, falling on God's mercy and asking for his grace to be at work. I'll end with this today. I was reminded of this 
Boy, it's been about 20 years ago when my grandmother passed away. And uh, I had been looking through some things, but I found a couple letters from her that she had written to me in college. And she said, I'm praying for you. Well, after the funeral and as a family gathered to look through the house and sort through some things, we came upon some notebooks and some Bible studies. I began to look at those and I started to cry because I had no idea the kind of prayer, the kind of intercessor that my grandmother was. And I think back of how she prayed for me. And was it because of her prayers that I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Was it her prayers that helped me finish college to start on the path that I was on? But my grandmother took on intercessory prayer for me and I know others in my family. But what about you? Who has interceded for you, friends? People that maybe you don't even know about. Who is God asking you to intercede for, to pray on their behalf? And so some of the practice prompts this week will ask you in some ways to sit and listen and ask God who it is you're supposed to pray for. Maybe he just drops somebody's name into your mind. Pray for them. Ask the Lord how you should pray for them. But be attentive to his spirit. The more attentive you are, the more he's going to invite you to pray because he needs people praying for his people. He needs people praying for the world that they might know him and come to him. So friends, we're wrapping this up. This is it, intercessory prayer. What a great way to end. What a great, great invitation to wrap this up, to be people that are in prayer. So, again, may you be blessed. May you hear the Lord's voice as you seek him and as you pray and intercede on behalf of others. Bless you, friends.